Well, hey there, and welcome back to Heimler's History, and welcome to the first topic video for Unit 3 of the AP U.S. History Curriculum. Now, this unit covers the time period from 1754 to 1800, and in this video, we're going to begin by talking about the French and Indian War, so if them brain cows are ready to get milked, let's get to it. Now, before we begin, let me mention that if you're needing more help than these videos are giving you, then you might want to check out my AP U.S. History View Packet, which covers all nine units of the curriculum. It's got exclusive video content from this guy, it's got note guides to follow along, practice questions, and everything you need to get an a in your class and a five on your exam in May. And I really think it'll help you and it helps support the work that I'm doing here on this channel. So if that's something you're into, you know, check it out. Okay, now the French and Indian War. Now, if I was in class, the very first thing I would ask my students is to name the two sides of this war. And inevitably someone would raise their hand and tell me that the French were fighting the Indians. And then I would smile and gently correct them by saying, you're wrong. I'm kidding, I love my students. Anyway, this was not a conflict between the French and the Indians. It was a conflict between the British and the French and the French allied themselves with several groups of American Indians, and to be fair, so did the British, but their alliances weren't that important for this conflict. So it's the French and the Indians versus the British. Okay, so with all that established, let me tell you what we'll be trying to accomplish in this video. Basically, we're just trying to explain the causes and effects of the French and Indian War, okay? Easy. So let's start with the causes. Now, the first thing you need to know is that the French and Indian War was actually a smaller conflict in the context of a much larger global conflict between the British and the French called the Seven Years' War. So the Seven Years' War was a worldwide conflict, and the French and Indian War was a small part of that conflict which occurred on the American soil. So the cause of this war is pretty simple. The British American colonists were steadily encroaching on land in the Ohio River Valley that the French had laid claim to. And here's where I introduce you to a young and scrappy Virginian officer by the name of George Washington. Now, by 1753, he had been appointed lieutenant colonel in the Virginia militia, and as such, Virginia's government sent Washington west to warn the French of encroaching on British holdings in the Ohio River Valley. The French commander whom Washington met rebuffed him. Consider yourself rebuffed. And six months later, this same commander took control of a British post in Pennsylvania called Fort Duquesne, and so fresh from chopping down a cherry tree... Don't write that down. That's not real. Washington, with help from his American Indian allies, led a surprise attack on the fort in 1754 and then gained it back. And then two months later, the French, salty about about their own rebuff at the hands of the man whom they had rebuffed led a much larger force against the fort and took it right back. Now, why is any of this important? Because this was the cause of the French and Indian War. Territorial disputes in the Ohio River Valley between the French and the British caused this war to begin in 1754. Now, even before Washington was defeated at Fort Duquesne, a Congress was meeting to try to figure out British colonial defense against the French and the Indians. It was known as the Albany Congress or the Albany Convention, and here delegates from several British colonies met to discuss a more organized colonial colonial response to frontier defense and trade and westward expansion. They also invited a delegation from the Iroquois Confederacy to join them with the hopes of allying with this powerful Indian association. But I guess they were more like a token presence because the delegates didn't even involve them in the conversation. Side note, you may be wondering why the American Indians were willing to ally themselves with either side at all. Like, weren't the European settlers taking over all their ancestral lands? Like, why in the world are they wanting to make friends with them? Well, for most of the Indian groups, they could see that the best chance of maintaining some modicum of control over their lands lay in the perpetual conflict between European powers. Like, as long as these two European nations were fighting each other, the American Indians had a chance to maintain some control, and what they feared most is that one of these European nations would gain control of North America. But I'm sure they don't have anything to worry about. Like, that's not gonna happen, right? Right? Anyway, it was at the Albany Congress that our boy Benjamin Franklin took the opportunity to introduce his Albany Plan of Union. And under this plan, the colonies would establish a council of representatives to decide on those matters I already mentioned, frontier defense and trade and westward expansion. Now, this plan was ultimately rejected, not least because the taxation it required to exist stunk in the nostrils of the delegates. But the reason why it was important is that it laid the foundation for the future Revolutionary Congress, on which more in another video. Now, back to the war. At first, the French kind of mocked the floor with the British, and it was going very badly for them. And then add to that, the Seven Years' War was expanding more and more into a global conflict, and as it did, the British implemented policies that ended up being very unpopular with their American colonists. First, the British cranked up the forced impressment of American men to join the ranks of the Royal Navy. And that's one point in the lasting colonial resentment category. Second, throughout the war, the British quartered troops in colonial homes, and if anyone resisted feeding and housing these soldiers at their own expense, they were threatened with violence. Look at that, another point in the lasting colonial 
male resentment category. Now, as the war dragged on, eventually King George was getting a little twitchy about how much it was costing, and so he opened formal peace negotiations with the French. The war ended in 1763 with the signing of the Peace of Paris. Now, this treaty had massive results for the American colonists. First, Spain ceded Florida to the British. Second, the French were ousted from the North American continent, and the Spanish were given control over former French lands west of the Mississippi. Third, all the land east of the Mississippi River, which is to say the Ohio River Valley, was granted to the British. And now is where we start talking about the effects of the French and Indian War, and there were two main consequences I need to mention. First, because the land in the Ohio River Valley was now under British control, American colonists, hungry for more land, began to push westward. And as you can imagine, this migration intensified the conflicts with the Native Americans who lived there, and when news of this new land arrangement reached the Ottawa leader Pontiac, he led raids against the encroaching colonists in Detroit and other military forts in Virginia and Pennsylvania. And so seeking to protect their colonists from more violence with the natives of the region, the British Parliament established the Proclamation Line of 1763, which forbade the colonists from migrating west across the Appalachian Mountains and taking land in the Ohio River Valley. But the colonists, in what will become a lasting theme in American history, were like, <laughs> Yeah, right. And went ahead and migrated west anyway, and their reasoning was that this war was fought on their soil at the cost of their blood, and therefore they were entitled to the spoils of that war. But when the British said, nuh-uh, and drew that proclamation line, that put another point in the lasting colonial resentment category. And the second major consequence of this war is that it was expensive. Like, as a result of fighting this war, the British national debt roughly doubled. Add to that, the cost of running the colonies increased something like five-fold, and so in order to pay for all of that, the British Parliament decided to raise the revenue by raising taxes on American colonies. Big mistake! And to see why that mistake added yet another point to the lasting colonial resentment score, you'll have to join me for the next video. All right, thanks for hanging out with me, and that's what you need to know about Unit 3, Topic 2 of the AP U.S. History Curriculum. As I mentioned before, the Ultimate Review Packet is your friend when it comes to doing well in this class and on your exam in May. So if you'd like that help and you'd like to support this work, then go ahead and grab it right here. If you want me to keep making these videos for you, then let me know by subscribing. Heimler out.